return as tomorrow. There's a magic fascination about the jet, especially when it is brought down to earth and harnessed to an automobile. Like General Motors' amazing laboratory on wheels, Firebird One, the four-wheeled grandson of the jet airplane. Like its famous predecessors, it too gets its power from a tornado of hot burning gases. But instead of pushing out of a tailpipe, those hot gases do their work on a turbine that drives the wheels. Even though it was introduced at the 1954 Motorama, Firebird One already is obsolete, but it has served its purpose. GM designed and built it as a test track vehicle to see how well a gas turbine engine could drive an automobile. Could such an idea be adapted to family car driving conditions? Here on the outskirts of Detroit at GM's vast new technical center, these problems are constantly explored. In this modernistic industrial development are the staff groups of GM, whose plans affect nearly everybody's tomorrow. Their unusual landscaping reflects their inventive imagination. The Silver Dome appropriately houses the stage for the styling staff's new creation. In the research laboratory also are men who explore the distant future. They project their thinking from the solid foundations of many years' experience with the famous Allison turbojet engines, the forerunners of gas turbine engines. They've also learned a great deal from building the GM Turbo Cruiser, the world's first bus powered by a gas turbine engine. Still more knowledge has been gained from the engine design for Firebird 1. Here is a simple, durable, high-output power plant, a continuous flow of power, and naturally balanced because there are no reciprocating parts, no pistons, no connecting rods, no valves. But could something be done to make it even better? Would it be possible to save some of the waste exhaust heat and put it to work for greater fuel economy? Scores of questions like these were translated into formulas for technical analysis by the giant electronic brain. With these answers provided, the human brain went into action again. In the beginning, to tackle the great task, thousands of engineering drawings were made. A myriad of technical problems were encountered through every stage in building a new kind of car. and vastly improved gas turbine began to take form. First, the gasifier turbine is fitted to the compressor. Then the revolutionary new drum regenerator, one of the most important developments in this project. Next, the burner section, which produces a blast of hot gas. And this package represents a small jet engine, which drives the power turbine and the vehicle itself. The engine now goes to the test dynamometer which absorbs and measures power produced by the engine. It is instrumented to study such things as temperatures, pressures, speed, fuel consumption, and power. Here is where the various components of the engine are evaluated. A good place to study the engine in real action. Here's what's going on inside, as shown by this simplified exhibit. Outside air is drawn in by the air compressor and is delivered to the regenerator drum, where the air absorbs the heat of the regenerator. It then is delivered to the burner. Here, because the air is now already hot, only a small amount of fuel is needed to bring it up to operating temperature. The hot burning gases then push out through the gasifier turbine. 
Back at the power turbine, the heated gases continue through the blades and drive the car. Instead of being exhausted directly to the outside, these hot gases are detoured to the regenerator through which they pass and give up most of their heat, about 80%. Then they're released to the outside air at mild temperatures. The drum is constantly rotating, first through the hot exhaust gas, then through the relatively cool air from the compressor, carrying the heat from the exhaust to the incoming air. If there were no regenerator, the compressor air would go directly to the burner with no preheating. On through the turbines, and straight out without utilizing its exhaust heat. While the GT304 engine is being perfected, a new kind of chassis for the Firebird II is developed by other men of the research staff. In their effort to create a new car, they introduce a chassis with many revolutionary automotive concepts. In this cutaway chassis, for example, we see the electrical system, which features a high-capacity alternating current generator, much smaller than its DC counterpart. The charging system uses a rectifier to produce direct current for the car's 12 volts battery. Another engineering advantage is a central hydraulic system with a special pump built by Saginaw Steering Gear Division. The system supplies and stores oil under high pressure, which makes it possible to use the hydraulic units even before the engine is started. Windshield wiper, power steering, air oil suspension, and the brakes. This is another new development in the Firebird II, the Turbo X brake by Moraine Products Division, an all-metal disc brake which provides smooth, safe, and straight-ahead stopping ability. It operates by squeezing a rotating cast-iron disc between pads of metal lining material. Balanced braking at each wheel helps eliminate swerving or pulling to one side. This yellow cylinder is the Delcomatic Air Oil Suspension, a new idea in the Firebird II, which provides a soft, comfortable ride giving the car the best height above bump stops regardless of load. Trapped air acts as the spring. This is a simulated ride down a rough and rocky road without air oil suspension. Now, air oil suspension takes the bumps out of the road. It's actually like riding on air and oil. Attached to each wheel individually, it works with another new conception in automotive suspension. A short stub axle suspended from the frame by a swing arm at the rear. It's kind of like knee action. The GM Engineering Staff's Transmission Development Group designed and built a rotating four-speed planetary gear and fluid coupling transmission with an idle cutout that allows the power turbine to drive accessories without driving the wheels. By mounting the transmission between the rear wheels, the usual hump in the front floor is eliminated, and better weight distribution is obtained. Wires and tubes are routed through the double floor, an integral part of the frame construction. Now there's a feeling of accomplishment. The car begins to materialize with the installation of Whirlfire Turbo Power in a compact air-cooled engine. The power is ready now for the celebrated body. Sturdy, lightweight, non-corrosive metal body is desired, and titanium, a new wonder metal, is used. But styling is more than just a matter of pleasing lines, pretty colors, and a dash of chrome. It takes careful arranging to integrate the power plant chassis and body. Primarily, the passengers must be made comfortable in attractive seats, for the Firebird must look as well as perform like a car of the future. Now to give the first breath of life to this experimental car. And so is born GM's Firebird the Seven, another historic milestone in automotive engineering. Here's a study of the Firebird through a cinemascope lens, gliding down the highway of tomorrow.
great power package which opened a new era in aviation may someday be harnessed to serve the motoring public. This is a family car with the magic of jet power. Scientists don't say this will happen, but they say it could. At General Motors Tech Center, the designers, research men, and engineers keep probing into the future, trying new experiments with the gas turbine engine and the firebirds of tomorrow. For the men of ideas in these laboratories, the present tense never catches up. They work and live in the future, trying to foresee the scientific world ahead.